welcome in our co-host, New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap, because they don't chart the worst-selling authors. John, good morning to you. Good morning. That poor fella. <laughs> One book. It's all he sold <laughs> to his mom. That's it. I'm afraid there's a lot of those out there now. They're called self-published authors. One book. Yeah. Uh, you've got an author friend coming on in the back half of the show I do. Here today. And he'll have a lot to share, actually. He's number one best-selling author of on Writer's Digest books. He's he's an instructor as well as a fiction author. And there's New York Times best-selling authors. Then there's number one. Well, he hasn't author. gotten there yet, but nor have I actually. But you guys are trying, you're climbing. Yes. All right. With our help, we're going to get you there. Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey, who has absolutely no jurisdiction in this room right now. Good morning, Matt Harvey. Good morning. Good morning. Great to have you with us. It's good to be back. I was out last week. Were you sick or you just had other stuff to do? I had other stuff to do. I had better stuff to do. Right. People I'm to kidding. put in jail? <laughs> you had better stuff. Well, you should have better stuff. This is a non-paid job. So you, as a prosecuting attorney, I would no, hope you'd have better I, things to do. I, there's nothing better than spending a few hours with my friends here at WRNR. Yeah, there's a lot on that list that's better than actually that. Well, yeah. yeah and Daughter's I, birthday party, for instance. Or any, any sort of birthday party. Any sort of ca- events related to cake. Cake is always yeah. a good thing. Yeah, we've had plenty of treats over the last couple of weeks brought into us or given to us as we've been at the Berkeley County Commission Chamber meeting room for our forums. Uh, thanks to uh, Lori down there at the Berkeley County uh, Those snickerdoodles offices. were great. Uh, weren't they? Yeah. And the chocolate drizzle brownies. I don't know if you had one of those or not. They're tiny. They're like little bite-sized yeah. things, so you didn't go overboard on them. She's, are, she's a baker. Are those over? Yes, we did the 15th and the 22nd. So uh, we will be doing uh, Riley Moore and Steve Wendelin live in studio on October the 29th for an hour. As far as I know, that's their only public debate that they'll be doing right here on this program. Wow. Exclusive. So, happy to have them. So let's welcome in our guests here on the program. By the way, at 835, Tony Petrucci will call in and give us the early voting numbers. Uh, as they have been around the country, they have been strong in Berkeley County, and I looking at a note in our comment section on Facebook that says uh, one of our viewers is in line right now and there's 150 people or so waiting to vote. So that's awesome. Enthusiasm is strong this uh, general election season. Tim Garino joins us from the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission, pastor there and a uh, man uh, who has made quite an impression on our community in the couple years he's been with us. What year did you start in Berkeley County, Tim? Uh, January 2019, right before COVID. Five and years coming up. Uh, well, six years, six I guess, years, yep, this January. Six years coming right? up this January, yep. Yeah, you're, you brought COVID with you. Is that what no, you're saying? No, I didn't. You, know. you blew from California, <laughs> brought it from the West Coast? <laughs> no, and uh, yeah, COVID was, uh, I was only on uh, here for a year, and then all of a sudden COVID hit, and uh, we stayed open, and you guys, I, I, you guys were with us the entire time. Mm-hmm. I remember that, and I appreciate that because, and we were one of the few that had uh, video, we had a website, we had Facebook, we had all that stuff where a lot of churches were caught, uh, a lot of organizations were caught. They didn't have all the live streaming and all that stuff. Yeah. And we had all that, and you guys were with us the, throughout the entire time. And uh, it was a blessing. We stayed open. We were serving almost 900 meals a day from June, uh, I mean, from uh, March of 2020 when it all, when all the restrictions hit to June mm-hmm. of 2020 and we had uh, nurses and stuff at our front door every day and it was great um, but I brought Steve Cox with me um, last time I was on I talked about Steve briefly and a little bit shared a little bit of uh, stuff and you said bring him on and let's hear his testimony and uh, Steve Steve uh, how, how how long were you homeless before and and how long were you homeless before you came to the rescue mission about two and a half weeks and you were you were living where uh, an old food line in Inwood, and uh, right there where they pushed the carts at, I was staying inside there. And um, how did you get to the rescue mission then? Uh, my brother brought me up here, and um, I've been here for a while. And prior to you becoming homeless, what happened? You and your brother and, and your brother's wife were got it? Yeah, um, they got evicted. They didn't pay the rent. I was paying him, but he wasn't paying the rent. So the uh, sheriffs came on Saturday morning and gave us 15 minutes to get out. Oh, where were you living, Steve? Uh, in Inwood. Inwood? And where'd you grow up? I uh, grew up in Silver Spring area. Okay, and when did you make your way to West Virginia? Uh, about two and a half years ago. What do you do for a trade? Um, I'm a painter. Painter? Okay. And at the time you were living with your brother, did you have work? 
Uh, no, I'm on disability now. Okay, you, is it permanent disability? Yes. Okay, so uh, I, I assume then uh, hopefully you're getting aid from the state or, or the federal government, Medicare, Social Security of some sort, Medicaid, I mean? Yes. Okay, that's good. And you were homeless for two and a half weeks. Were you homeless with your brother and his wife? No, I wasn't. They um, went to his in-laws. And, and where did you go? Um, I went over to the food line building and stayed over there, the old food line and then would. So you just you go from being in a home to now you're living in a in an old food line. Yep. Yeah. How many other people were in there? Just me. How did you know to go there? Ah, uh, because it was empty. <laughs> yeah. So you were there for two and a half weeks. Yes, sir. Right. How did you How did you get in? Is is it was it unlocked? No, it was uh, where they pushed the carts at. It's just yeah. a little overhang there. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. What time of the year was that? Uh that was. Warm months or cold yeah, months? About um, September. Yeah. Did your brother know you were living there? Yes. Yeah. And you were there two, two and a half weeks. Did, what did you do during the day during those two and a half weeks? Um, I'd go over to um, the family dollar area and just bum some money and mm -hmm. try to get some food and stuff. Yeah. So... After two and a half weeks, you make your way to the rescue mission. Did you know about the rescue mission before then? No, I didn't. My brother told me about it. He looked it up and found it, and he came got me and brought me up here. Okay, and was there any resistance on your part to going to the rescue mission once your brother found out about it? No, there wasn't. Right. And what was your experience like on your first day at the mission? It was good. Um, they taught me a lot since I've been there in the rescue mission. Um I got saved about four or five years ago, and then I fell away from God. And now I fall back into God, and I'm learning a lot and mm -hmm. everything like that. Do you have a job at the mission? Uh, yes, I work in the laundry room. Okay, and uh, how many hours a day does Tim work you? <laughs> uh, eight hours a day. Eight hours a day, all right. And do you still live at the mission? Yes, sir. Okay, and is, will that be a permanent residence, or is or do you transition to your own place at some point? I'm going to transition my own place at some point. Okay, and are you getting any additional training or whatever for uh, another job outside of the mission? No, um, like I said, I'm on disability. Okay, does that exclude you from being able to do pretty much yes. any other full-time work? Yeah. Okay, and will will you be able to continue working at the mission then? Uh, once I leave, uh, yeah. no. Okay, how will you make a living? Um, I get disability every month, and I'm going to go into low hou housing okay. income. Is that is the disability enough to get by? Uh, yes, it would be. Yeah, and I guess the point I'm getting at, Steve, is I'm, I'm trying to determine if because of the limitations on your disability income, if you'll wind up homeless again after you move out. No, I won't. And and you're, you're clean and sober. Your, your, your addictions were, what were your two addictions that you struggled with? Alcohol. I drink a lot every day and mm -hmm. um, gambling. And I haven't had a beer in uh, about a year now. October the 15th was a year. Was the alcohol, was that something you were taking because of the pain that you're in from your disability? Uh, no. Um, I just like to drink. Mm -hmm. You're not alone there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot of people like to have a drink. Um, and I was gambling a lot when I came into the mission. Now I'm not. Mm -hmm. uh, thank God to the Lord. And um, I recommend the mission for people that's homeless and they need to get help to come to the mission because they will help you and will support you. Okay. When you were asking for money, the two and a half weeks you were homeless, uh, do most people give money or did just a few? Uh, most people do. Yeah. And then you used it for food. Did you use any of it for alcohol or gambling? Yes, I did. Yeah. Would you say that you used most of it for food and a little bit for alcohol and gambling or the other way around? No, uh, mostly for food. Okay, and how did you find the attitude of the people who would stop and give you money or those who wouldn't? Um, those who wouldn't, I asked for money. They would just go in the store and buy food and drink for me and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, most people would. Were you surprised by the kindness of people in your experience overall, or were you perhaps uh, under a different impression after your experience doing this? Um, I was surprised at people. Yes, I was. Yeah. Did anybody stop and say, uh, hey, I, here's a card, call me for a job if you're looking for work or something like that, or I know a place that's hiring, and you get any kind of advice like that? No, sir, I didn't. All right. Did you get any rude comments? 
Oh, uh, yeah. What would people say? Uh, they would just ask me, why am I out here? And then I'll tell them. And they're like, well, it's nobody's fault but yours. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. That's that's a bit judgmental, Tim, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Judge not lest you be judged, right? Is that not in the Bible? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, your brother is evicted. And at that moment, you have no choice to go anyplace else other than to just try to find a place to survive? Yeah, that was it. There were no other options at all? No, there wasn't. Well, if you had a – I'm sure you have, like, direct deposit for your disability. Yes. Did was there? Did you not have access to that bank account, like you could get a hotel room? Um, or, or, wasn't it, or was there not enough money in there? Or was your alcohol and gambling – Kind of depleting your bank account. Uh, I mean. It was kind of complete my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I understand. All right, so how did you end up getting help for the gambling and the alcohol? Was that through the, the mission? Yes, it was through the mission, the good Lord. Um, he's helped me out a lot. And uh, Pastor Tim and um, Patrick and Kevin, the supervisors there, they have helped me out a lot, very much so, mm-hmm. and talked to me and helped me out and they got me into some programs and i'm doing pretty good i'm surprised at my own self that i quit drinking and quit gambling yeah good for you congratulations how does it feel being sober uh very good don't wake up with a hangover <laughs> <laughs> so tell, tell me make sports easier to watch if you don't have money on it as well yeah. <laughs> tell me about the day of, of the eviction what happened obviously that you got 15 minutes to get out and and then you're outside. At that point, does the sheriff's department, whoever's conducting the eviction, do they do they point you toward the mission or toward a social worker, or is it no, just, just see you, you're yeah, on your own, and yep. and and walk off? That's what it is. So at that point, what did you consider your options to be? I mean, that has to be a really tough first day. I you- didn't know what to do, and until I just was over about. Uh, family dollar area in Inwood and I was just thinking I need to do something so I just went up to the old food line and slept up there what happened to all your possessions at the time clothes Uh, and whatever I only had one duffel bag to get my stuff and get out and the rest of my possessions were taken they was left there and I didn't have no way to go back and get them Tim what happens in those eviction situations with the property of the person who's getting evicted they lose it they, it's gone. Whoever's the landlord or whatever takes takes ownership, and most likely it gets thrown away. So Tim, so what's the deal when he, not necessarily <clears throat> with Steve, but when somebody shows up mm-hmm. not yet clean and sober, and they want to live at the mission? Mm-hmm. How does that work? Because I know that mm-hmm. being clean and sober is part of the deal. To live yeah, at the they come in like he did. They they uh, sit down with a uh, intake guy and the uh, Kevin or Patrick, and they uh, it's about a seventeen page intake form. It's online. You can see it online. We do everything. It's transparent. I mean, we don't just say transparent like your uncle and, <laughs> and, and then not be transparent. It's transparent. It's online. You can look it up, our intake form. I think it's 17, 18 pages. Don't quote me on that number, mm-hmm. but it's a lot. of. And it get, we get all the information. Steve filled it out. He sat down with somebody. He fills it out. Then they watch a video because, see, just because of the education of the folks that come into us, not everything they read they understand. So then they watch a video. Basically, the video is basically the intake, but it's they're speaking to you. And so he understands that um, you sign papers saying you will be tested at any time, a refusal to a test. Uh, now, when I say test, that's alcohol or drugs. If re- a refusal is a positive, um, uh, you only get so many times, and then you have to then go to a detox and then uh, complete that detox to come back to the mission. Um, and it gives you all the rules, you know, uh, all the guidelines, what we'll do for you, what's expected from, uh, from us, what's expected from you. Um, they fill all that out. It's important so we know what level they're on education-wise and stuff like that. Steve asked for a certain type of Bible. We got him a certain type of Bible so he can understand it in his language and his uh, understanding. And we do that with everybody coming in. And then if they test positive coming in, that's the first strike. And we tell them, okay, you got 30 days. Um, there's the AA program that we go to. There's the NA program that they go to. There's the discipleship classes. There's all the other stuff. 
Then we find out medically wise what they can do, what they can't do. So then we assign jobs based on their disability or non-disability um, at the mission because everybody works. They just don't sit around and do nothing. Um, and we do stuff like that. Steve is doing that. Um, one thing, if Steve does leave, he can come back and volunteer at the mission. And like a lot of, we have a lot of folks that do that and come back and volunteer. But our goal is to get him clean and sober and he can stay until he feels he need, he can then go out on his own, get his own place. Um, but, and, and in the process, he sees the, the supervisor, the case managers, Kevin and Patrick, on a regular basis. And um, we work with Steve. Um, Steve is a big help. He's a good fellowship. Uh, he's a good encourager to other guys that are coming in. Um, and he's not the only one that struggles with what he struggles with. He's not the only one there. Um, gambling is a big issue. We see that more and more. Uh, we have a lot of folks that are coming there now that are lost their belongings, or homes, and everything because of gambling. So, Well, can I ask a question about uh, that? Mm -hmm. Does the, the <clears throat> access to these apps and gambling has become a lot easier and i guess you know oh it's like anything else become a lot easier it, yeah, is it, it is that causing in your and i know it'd be anecdotal but and steve did, did it make you easier for you to gamble i mean did do you think that that has spread and made the gambling addiction worse no not really do, when you did when you gambled did you use an app or did you go to the place and gamble I went to the place and gambled. Yeah, see, he so does like the limbs, the, the yeah. slot machine. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. See, he didn't use that. What you're talking about? Yeah. So, Steve, I'm curious. When you go from being homeless and then you show up at, at the mission and you got this 17, 18 page form, was there a moment where you thought, "Are you kidding me? I've got to fill out all this paperwork." Did it did it seem unreasonable at the time when you first went <laughs> through it? I mean, I. Be honest, it, 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 yeah. is, it is. Yes, it is. It, it was all uh, difficult. Um, Come on, closer to your mic. It was difficult. I had a problem reading and writing, so um, one of the guys was there. He helped me fill it out. Yeah, we, we do that. I don't blame you, Steve. When I go see the doctor or the dentist in the new year and they say, hey, we need to update your information, they hand that four page thing. I go, I fill this out every year. Can't you just save it? Can't I just change the one thing that needs to change? No, we need to refill everything out. Yeah. Well, I get cranky. Yeah, so does everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> I would, I would just be thinking, I just want a pl place to sleep, okay? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it is, <laughs> it is, but but it but we have to. That's why we have people yeah. that help it, because it, it's it's vi when I first came there, uh, there was a lot that didn't happen like that, and a lot of information then is lost, and then it, it, the more information we get on somebody, the better we can help you and assist you. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, it, it's it is that's probably one of the biggest negatives that I deal with. Is people come and they see that and it's like, well, are you kidding me? You know, <laughs> and I and I tell them, look, this so and so will sit down with you. We'll work. We'll go through it. We'll get it all taken care of. Because once that is done, then we can help guys like Steve and get them to the next level. Get them to because a lot of times when I first came there, uh, we didn't know the stories about people. We didn't know their needs, and then they're sitting around or they're doing something, and they're getting in trouble. And I'm going, what? And then what? Well, if we'd have found that out coming through the door, we'd have been able to address it and help them and get them going. So, so you actually do read the things and oh, yeah. try to absorb them. Oh, yeah. So I'm assuming it's pretty intrusive. Right. Well, for example, we ask, are you on probation? Uh, or do you have any court issues? And 90% of the guys will tell us no, and then a probation officer shows up. And we're going, okay, you told us no. Or we get a court document saying um da 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 oh you said you had no court fines or whatever because we do help we help people get along if there's major fines and stuff like that we do like we have a gentleman right now who went through the system made a lot of mistakes and um we helped him get uh pay off his fines we helped him get a job they're taking 20 percent out of his check right now he's paying everything back and then all of it, and he paid all that off and then two years later we get another thing from another company saying you owe da 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 da. So he's paying that off. But if we didn't know all this stuff ahead of time, see, when people come to us, we don't hide them. There's a lot of places people go to hide mm -hmm. and get away from they're doing wrong. Child support. People will come to us and all of a sudden, do you owe child support? No. And then we get a court paper. Oh, you owe child support. You need to pay that. You know, so there's things like that. And when Steve came to us and, and his education as he shared, so that way you're not handing him a King James Bible that you and I could read. 
then you hand to Steve and he's going, uh huh, come on, man, right. you know. And so you, you get it to where they understand the language and it's and it and it's and it becomes um, easier to understand and learn. And so that's why we work with Steve and others um, and all kinds of people. We get people come in, speak two different languages, or uh, English is their second language. So all these things we need to know are disability. Like he's on a disability, so we don't put him in a job like in the warehouse. We're not going to put him in the warehouse when he's on disability because <laughs> the warehouse is pretty physical. Mm -hmm. So he does the laundry and and he get to, and he does a great job. And he'll tell you we have a lot of laundry. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> when you're doing seventy some guys every day, is a lot of laundry. Um, but you know, you you put them in positions where they need to be. We need to know all that. But you're right. It is intimidating. That's the biggest complaint I hear. I came to the mission and they made me fill out a book. <laughs> <laughs> when I also. I don't know. Before we run out of time, I do want to say how much I admire what what you're doing here. The fact that you're on the radio and you're sharing the story, and yeah. the fact that you kind of lived the nightmare. I think it's the thing that everybody fears is to lose everything all at once, and then kind of being lost and not having developing the coping skills because nobody has a plan for this in their life. And then to address the problem head on, and then to do the courageous thing, which is to address the addiction problems, right? And then to go on and share with other people what you did. I, th I think that that's great encouragement for those who might be on the fence who are either ashamed or frightened or whatever. It's it's something, and Pastor Tim is a, is a great communicator of his program, but as somebody who's going through the program, I, I think you're a great apostle for the program. So it's good on you for, for sharing. And Thank you guys, you. thanks for the questions. That was great. I'm glad you guys it's what, it's what we do. Yeah. Sit around and ask questions. <laughs> Hopefully the answers are there. Yeah. Tim, I've got about a minute and a half yeah. left. Uh, obviously, you always were looking to raise some money and get yeah. new drives going on. Go ahead. And we got hit hard this, uh, this past month with a lot of uh, repairs on major machinery at the mission. So if you could and you're, uh, go online, martinsburgunionrescuemission.com, hit the donate button, $5, 10 $15. We are... Oh, we're in the hole for the month of August. I mean October. How Jeez, much? I'm, I'm, uh, we're in the hole about seven thousand. Seven thousand. Yeah, it was a major repair that we had to do on on one of our machinery. So if you guys want to open up your pocketbooks and hit the donate button, five, ten, fifteen, every little bit matters. See guys like Steve and and ladies. In fact, the next time I come on, I'd like to bring one of the ladies from the Haven House, the sure. Transitional Family Living, on with me and let let you hear her story. Uh, an actual mom with kids and where she was before she came to us. Um, but guys like Steve, appreciate guys like Steve. Um, see more guys like Steve and um, others that I'll bring on. Uh, just make a donation today. Again, we appreciate you guys here and uh, giving us this opportunity. And thank you all for all that you guys do and, and bless us. I mean, they get the word out. We appreciate it. Thank you. Good to see you again. Thanks. Steve, best of luck to you. Thank you very much. Uh, keep fighting, man. Thank you.